Today, I am privileged to have with me four of the people who can be seen riding on the sides of New York's buses. On my right is Dr. Karen Hubbard, Professor of Molecular Biology at the City College, and Shanaz Gandhi, a postdoctoral researcher. Together, they are exploring the interrelation between aging and cancer. To my left is Dr. Jeffrey Halpern, Distinguished Professor of Psychology at Queens College and the Graduate Center's PhD Neuropsychology Program. Dr. Halpern works on the complex condition known as Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. With some of his grant money, Dr. Halpern was able to fund the research assistance of Michelle Bubnick, a senior at the CUNY William E. McCauley Honors College at Queens College. Welcome to you all. Shanaz, everybody talks about the importance of a mentor uh, in their development as a professional. You studied in India and then came to the United States for your PhD uh, that you received at, at the graduate school. How has your relationship with Dr. Hubbard uh, changed the way in which you think of yourself as a scientist? What are the kinds of skills and and values that you learn from that relationship with her? Well, in um, particularly with Dr. Hubbard, um, my realization has been over the years is um, that it's invaluable. There is a very direct connection and it affects uh, entirely the quality of your experience as a PhD student. And I think that is directly related to what you're going to do in the future, how I'm going to treat my students or how I'm going to look forward to interacting with other scientists because of what Dr. Hubbard has shown me and her, the quality of her interactions with me. That's great. Michelle, you're one of the selected few uh, who was given an opportunity to study in the Macaulay Honors College. Uh, obviously, you're a very fine student to be given that opportunity. And at some point during this time, you did meet Dr. Halpern, mm -hmm. who became your mentor. How did that relationship start? Were you a student mm -hmm. of Dr. Halpern? We actually met a little bit earlier. I was uh, studying just down the road at St. Francis Preparatory High School and became, in a re became involved in a research program there. And it was at that time that I contacted Dr. Halpern. And then at the college level, I opted to continue working with him and go to Queens College and be part of the uh, Macaulay Honors College to continue working with him because I enjoyed this line of research. We declare 2005-2015 audaciously as the decade of science at the City University of New York. And we're very sincere about that. We're investing a lot of resources, and we understand how important it is to ratchet up our understanding of the importance of creating a scientifically literate society mm -hmm. and to uh, educate youngsters uh, into fields that will be defining fields as we go forward. So not only do we want to show the very distinguished work that our faculty do and their connection with students so that we have the two of you together because Professors not only work in building very basic structures to increase knowledge and disseminate knowledge, but they also nurture students to take on the next role. And so, Karen, with you, mm -hmm. your picture is all over the buses yes. uh, and, and in the subways, and I'm sure that um, many people have contacted you as well. But what is your reaction? I mean, do you like the celebrity status, or, do you, or, or are you much more interested in communicating the work that you do and the importance of the mentoring process? Well, I think it's a little bit of both. You know, initially when um, I was told that a faculty colleague of mine said he almost ran into the bus when he saw my picture, <laughs> it was a little, you know, you know, 15 minutes of fame was kind of nice. Uh, but now I think, um, what I'm appreciating from it is that many of the students who see it and they can identify with me on being on the bus or the subway and they know about my research and they come back and they talk to me about what I'm doing and I think that's invaluable. 
You know, it's interesting. We have two female students, and we talk about the gender gap in, in science. And, yeah. and I think CUNY is, is really taking a lead uh, in the community of, of colleges and universities in attracting uh, females to study science and to be successful uh, in science. But I've always been deeply concerned about reaching students at a young enough age because the skill sets really mm -hmm. have to be developed younger. Do you have any ideas on, on that problem and how we might uh, work more effectively in reaching students at a younger age? I, th I think the key thing is, is within the public school system, whether it be elementary school, junior high school, getting them excited. There are so many wonders in science, in whether it be neuroscience, chemistry, mm -hmm. physics, astronomy. The, it, it, it's, if you have a good teacher who can excite them and want them to learn, they'll, they'll just gravitate to it. That's, that's been my experience. I really want to thank the four of you for taking time from your labs and <laughs> the things that are, are, you're so passionate about to share your experience uh, with our audience.